What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the Preacher Girl Podcast. My name is Rachel Arner, and this is episode number three. Today on the episode, we have Joelle Bradfield. Hello, Joelle. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know, Joelle Bradfield is my wonderful older sister and I love her to death so uh Joelle thank you so much for coming on the show today (laughs) my pleasure thanks for having me of course and just to let everyone else know um Joelle she is a professional photographer and she specializes in wedding photography and uh we'll talk a little bit about that later on in the show so all right joelle to get started um i guess kind of like let us know like where are you from you know where are you now just kind of that kind of thing <laughs> okay i got it <laughs> um well hi i'm joelle like rachel said i'm her sister and of like 20 20- one years, 22 years, <laughs> or 22. Okay, well, yes, okay. This is going to be a great show. Um, <laughs> it's going to be so great. <laughs> um, yes, I'm, so I'm Javelle. I'm based out of Bloomington, Indiana, where my husband and I live. I'm a full-time wedding photographer and entrepreneur. I um, also run my own podcast, which has been a lot of fun. And um, uh, what else? I just, I work with like a lot of business owners and photographers and I like to do mentoring and education and like workshops and stuff too. But, um, when I'm photographing, it's usually weddings or boudoir. So mm-hmm. that's a bit about what I do. Mm-hmm. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Like you like do so much, like it's so impressive. And I know I'm not the only one who's like super impressed by like, everything you do and like keep up with um but yeah so anyways um so you and your husband you're in Bloomington Indiana uh, how do you like it there like is it because it's kind of like a small it's town so right? cute. oh yeah I love it so yes it's kind of a small town but compared to Berrien it's like <laughs> huge <laughs> yeah so coming from Andrews where mm. there's like you know, the closest place is St. Joe it's a lot bigger or it feels a lot bigger yeah. so I really love it here it's fun mm-hmm. to be in a college town like we're surrounded by a lot of people who are our age um I've started going to the gym so I'm like meeting and around people who are our age um like mm-hmm. a couple times a week which is a lot of fun um there's tons of coffee shops around here which is like yes. my love language <laughs> so I'm all yes. um, but yeah we're enjoying it we'll be here for a couple of years until he Mm -hmm. graduates because Lyndon's studying in grad school here so Mm -hmm. that's why we moved here and we'll be here for a couple years and then wherever God leads after that yeah yeah no that's that's awesome and for those listening who may not know because you were talking about like the difference between Bloomington and Berrien Springs like Berrien Mm -hmm. Springs is so small like it's crazy like it's so small but yet there's like Andrews University here you know so it's like Mm -hmm. (laughs) but um but Bloomington yeah it's great like when I came to visit you know like it's it's a cute place I like it for yeah I love it I'm excited for you to visit again (laughs) oh yeah I am looking forward to it yeah so many things (laughs) (laughs) so uh you know moving on to like the next question I want to ask you um so you know you're a photographer so kind of like explain a little bit like I guess maybe like your day to day or not even that, but just like, what all does it entail? Like for like what you, you do for a living, you know? Mm, Where to begin? Um, Yeah, (laughs) sure. Of course. Um, It kind of, it depends a lot from the day to day because there's like so many different Mm -hmm. things I could do. And I'm also the type of person who I give myself more work to do just because Uh I find it fun. And so I'll like think of all these new projects and then like start working on them and stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. um, for example, I'll just like give you a rundown of what today has been so far to give you a small idea of what it can look like. Right. Excuse me, my voice. Um, So like I woke up this morning and went to a workout class, which is really great to just like kind of like start my day and like clear my mind and Mm -hmm. rejuvenate me and stuff, which so good and then I came home and got ready for the day and I started working on stuff for my podcast so Mm -hmm. I 
like to do this practice every day before I get to work where I'll write down a daily affirmation, which for me, it's whatever comes to mind first. That's like a positive reinforcing. So like today Mm -hmm. I wrote down, um, God is always moving or Mm -hmm. sometimes it's like love is in abundance or you've got this or, you know, it can be super simple stuff. Right. So I write that down and then I write down three things that I'm grateful for minimum. So I can always write down more than that if I want, but at least three. And then I'll write down everything that I want to get done for the day. So today I wanted to focus on getting some stuff done for my podcast. So like lining up more guests and, um, and like putting together some like marketing material and stuff like that. And then I had some photo sessions that I needed to go through and start editing. And so I've done some of that. And, Mm -hmm. um, and then I also have a workshop coming up that I need to start working on content for like the different courses that I'll be teaching. So right now that's kind of what I've been working on, but the different things, like it can vary from day to day. Like there's editing, there's content creation, there's marketing. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, what else? There's There's just like all kinds of stuff. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you're really busy then pretty much. (laughs) Yeah, but it's a lot of fun. And I think that yeah. helps a lot. Like when people say that it's more enjoyable, like when you love what you do, like mm. it really is. So I think yeah. that's made a big difference, which is nice. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And like, I think most people, if not everyone, um, can really tell that you really do like love what you do, like it really comes across. Um, and so I think that's super awesome. I love how you mentioned you write down, you said you write down things that you're grateful for, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's so cool. I'm going to start doing that. That's like a great idea. Yeah. I I try to do that every day. And then one practice that I want to start doing more regularly is at the end of the day, write down three things that happened that like made the day fun or exciting or like three good things that happened during the day mm-hmm. so that I like mm-hmm. both start and end the day in a grateful mood yeah a grateful mood I like that because I was gonna say like a positive mindset but like right a grateful mood yeah that's awesome that's really cool that's really, really yeah cool. it's made a big difference <laughs> yeah that's great that's great so uh as a photographer you know at what time like what moment were you know was it like an aha moment where you were like oh my goodness, like, I want to be a photographer for the rest of my life. Like, did that happen when you were like five years old? Like, you know, (laughs) when was that? You know, what did that look like? Well, it's funny, because I feel like whenever you reach the point where you're pretty certain on what you're doing, career wise, you can always look back and trace it back to different points in your childhood or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed like, taking photos on like cameras and stuff when I was a kid but I never thought of it as a career opportunity it was more just like I liked taking pictures and it was fun so I that's what I did yeah and um and then when I got to high school one of my camp friends started the 365 day project which if you've never heard of that before basically it's where you have a challenge every like a photo challenge every day throughout the entire year And you take a photo that reflects that challenge. So you're basically growing your creativity muscles and stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. um, I just thought that she was doing a school project that went through the summer. (laughs) And (laughs) I thought it was really cool the kind of work that she was coming up with. And it challenged me or inspired me to start taking photos myself just for fun. So Mm -hmm. I told myself that... I could take a photo a day of whatever I wanted. It could be edited however I wanted. Like I basically gave myself 100% creative freedom Mm. and just let myself have fun with it, which I think is such a good reminder looking back on that. Um, And that was kind of when I started having more fun with it. And then I I think I was in high school at that time Mm -hmm. and the following year, I think Mm -hmm. around that same time, there was like a photo class that was added as an extracurricular. So I signed up for it. Okay. And that's when I started to learn a little bit about Photoshop and the like manual settings, which totally didn't sink in at that time. (laughs) Right. um, (laughs) That stuff is really confusing at first. But yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
No, I started, I did that photo class for, I think it was only one year. It might have been two. And I, it was really fun because our teacher got us connected with the Canon department in the area. So we got to go cool. visit their place and like try out some of their equipment and get some of our photos printed and stuff. And so wow. that was pretty fun. Yeah. And she took us on field trips and it, it was just a really cool experience on like just learning more about photography mm-hmm. and having fun with it. And I still didn't think of it as anything career wise until my junior year of college. So this was wow. like three or four years later. Yeah. Um, and I had been majoring in photography just because I thought it was a fun hobby that I wanted to keep growing my creative skills in. Mm -hmm. Um, And then by my junior year of college, I had been doing some portrait sessions and photographing graduations and different events on campus on the side just to make some income Uh because we all know college students need that extra money. (laughs) So Uh that was like my way of trying to like, you know, just like be able to go have Taco Bell or get clothes or whatever. Yeah. And um by junior year, people were beginning to refer me to so many different things that it really felt like I was just heading towards a path of photography as a Mm. career. And I wasn't sure how I felt about that. Like I felt pretty conflicted. And I did kind of have an aha aha moment, you could say. Yeah. Um, One night, Lyndon and I were sitting on the couch. And I was like, talking to him about like, this like you know feeling like I'm being like pulled in this direction and just Mm. like you know really like trying to figure out if that's the way that I should go or not because that up until that point my plan was to um start my own magazine again after I graduated Mm. college once I was done with classes and I had some time um but I didn't have nearly as many connections or resources or like anything that I felt like was strong enough under my belt at that point, because I'd been um, so focused or like right. putting more of my energy into photography. And I wasn't, mm-hmm. I like, I was enjoying it. So mm-hmm. it wasn't bad. Um, it was just like still conflicting. Cause it was like, I was trying to hold on to this thing that I knew probably wasn't the right decision. Mm-hmm. And it was more of just like, convincing myself to let go of that and just trust God with the circumstances. So ultimately that's what I ended up doing was just Mm -hmm. taking a leap of faith saying, okay, God, it feels like this is where you're taking me. So I'm just going to trust you that it's what's right for (laughs) now and then just see where it goes. So that was the night that I just handed it all over to him, took a leap of faith. And since then it's kind of been nonstop with photography Mm -hmm. and it's been a ton of fun. Like I I don't regret it at all. And it's been, It's yeah, it's just been a ton of fun. So that's 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 awesome. how it's all kind of gone down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's that's super cool, and that's like a great story. I love how you mentioned it's like you were, you know, you had a plan. Like you were like, I'm gonna, you know, start a magazine, and like, mm-hmm. and all that is like super cool. But then, like how you were saying, like you felt like it wasn't really like things weren't lining up for yes. that to to work out. I guess you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And how you just like felt like, you know, like photography, like maybe this is it. So like, that's so cool. I love that. And like that you, Thanks. you focused on like, um, like having fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I think that's yeah. a big part I think part it's of- like, that's really important to just like keep in mind is just have fun with things. Right. It makes it more enjoyable in general. For sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Why take life so serious all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's awesome. That's really cool. So um, about your business then, you know, it's like, your your business is it seems like it's constantly growing and it's it's very successful um what like tips and tricks then um do you have for um maybe young entrepreneurs or business owners maybe they're in college maybe they're you know older um whatever age you know what would you say um you know kind of some advice for people who are pursuing maybe a business starting up a business you know um, I have this quote on my wall that I put on my letter board just the other night that I think sums it up perfectly. Mm. It's be patient, be persistent, and don't forget to pray. Mm. So basically the three P's yeah. <laughs> if you're in marketing. Um, <laughs> there's, yeah. um, 
there's, I don't know. I think it's a lot of faith and hard work. Mm. Like obviously when you take a creative business where Mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're trying to build it up and get your name out there and build the foundation so that it's successful and runs smoothly. It takes a lot of hard work and a lot of faith and it can be scary, especially if you don't have any other sources of income. So it takes a ton of persistence with that and patience because it doesn't happen overnight. And I think a lot of people, myself included, want it to happen sooner than, you know, you, you Mm -hmm. believe that it's going to happen sooner than it might be realistic. Um, And so I think that's where patience comes into play is just being patient Mm -hmm. with yourself, still staying focused and dedicated to it, but also, just like giving yourself grace and stuff mm-hmm. too, if you don't meet certain deadlines that you set for yourself and things like that. Mm-hmm. But really, the biggest thing I believe has just been a ton of prayer and faith, and just like, mm-hmm. um, just talking with God about different things and asking Him to send, you know, business, weddings, mm-hmm. photo sessions, whatever it is that you're wanting to book or um get more business in like just Mm -hmm. be very specific and pray for that every day Mm -hmm. for like weeks and like you'll start to notice a difference and that's one of the biggest lessons that I learned last year and I've um since I started doing that I've noticed the difference and the fruition that comes with it and it's been one of the biggest game changers that I can say has been for my business so definitely prayer um connections are really good too so um just connecting with other creatives in your community Mm -hmm. or um you know thinking outside the box offering mini sessions or asking other photographers to mentor you Mm -hmm. and like or seeing if you can shadow them on a session like things like that where you're like just like willing to learn and grow your connections too because that can really come into play too Mm. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. Um, And I was going to ask this next question, next question a little later, kind of about faith and business, but since we're already on it, and you're, you're pretty much, you know, talking about it. um, You know, a lot of people, it seems like um, they don't want to integrate faith and their business, um, because that can be kind of uh scary in a sense but it can also be okay. rewarding kind of like what you're talking about so what have you kind of noticed and you kind of touched on that a little bit you know what are some positive parts of integrating faith with your business um well and is that even you know is it, is it possible it. or is it like oh, for is sure. it just like you know oh that's not even like a thing you know don't even you know <laughs> No, 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 no. It's definitely a positive thing. And mm-hmm. I was terrified to talk about Jesus or faith or anything along yeah. those lines uh-huh. for a long time. Like I thought I just needed right. to keep it just photography and business mm-hmm. and leave that as like another box on the side kind of a thing. Right, right. And right. then I just like felt, I think I felt a little bit convicted to start okay. sharing a little more. Okay. And I just slowly like yeah. like took my own time with it kind mm-hmm. of a thing so didn't share more than I was comfortable with but oh, I okay. found that by sharing stories so mm-hmm. things that have happened um that I can credit back to God that mm-hmm. have helped me whether in my business or my personal life um just stories that give encouragement and hope I found that those are really positive reinforcements for people and mm-hmm. whether people believe and God are not, they right. still find them comforting because everyone wants, you know, good vibes and oh, yeah. encouragement and right. stuff like that. So I think that's one of the ways that I found to be like really helpful mm-hmm. um, as far as like integrating faith in my business and stuff like that. Right. Um, but one thing that I found is that unless like if I don't feel connected myself to Jesus, then it's mm-hmm. really hard for me to connect other people to mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. So I just try and make it a big priority for me to fuel my faith first sure, yeah. before I can like help others to be able to see Jesus and, and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. um, but as far as like integrating faith and business and stuff, I just, mm-hmm. for the, 
approach that I take it is I just try and be open, like, like mm-hmm. let people know that I'm a, you know, a safe space. Like if people ever want to talk about things, like I'm, I'm there to talk mm-hmm. or like an ear to listen and things like that. Yeah. Um, without pushing anything on them, just listening to their questions or their concerns and trying to see where they're coming from and then just having a conversation about it. And I think that has been really helpful too, especially for people who might not come from a background of growing up in the church and like everything right. might be super new to them or they're not really sure where their stands mm-hmm. or even for people who did grow up in the church mm-hmm. and they're just like questioning, you know, where they stand now, mm-hmm. having someone who's like not necessarily neutral, but like mm-hmm. someone who isn't going to try to push anything on them, but rather just be there if they want to talk about it. Yeah. Um, I think, I found to be really helpful for a lot of people. So that's the approach that I take from it. And Mm -hmm. by just like stories and, Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And I like how you're saying, you know, like, don't overthink it pretty much, you know, like, you know, you don't have to like, you know, go crazy thinking about how can I integrate faith and business, you know, if someone wants to do that. Um, and mm-hmm. everyone loves stories, you know, stories are great, <laughs> you know, yeah. especially if they're like, you know, positive vibes, like you're saying, you know, and encouraging and hopeful, like, that's awesome. So no, that's great. That's, that's a great answer. I love it. Um, so the next question I have for you, um, kind of in a different um, topic here, but kind of about love, you know, there's a lot of people mm-hmm who are maybe they are either in a relationship or they're not in a relationship. Um, I love the relationship that you and Lyndon have. Like, absolutely. You guys are awesome. I love it. Um, So specifically for the single folks out there, um, there are, um, you know, especially a lot of college students who are probably, you know, single and they're probably wondering you know, how much longer am I going to, you know, be single for, or like the Bible says like, oh no, am I supposed to be single or am I not, you know, people are trying to figure out, you know, what to think of that, you know, stage in their life. So I guess what advice do you have um, for them? You know? Well, the first thing I want to say is I think everyone has their own path. And so Mm. the timing, that things happen won't be the same for you as they will be for me or you know sure. whoever yeah so that's a good thing to keep in mind first and when it comes to like just being single I think the best thing to do is just enjoy it because it's a really fun time to like get to know what you like what you enjoy doing like who you are it's a Mm -hmm. great time for that because it can be kind of hard sometimes if you're um in a relationship and you don't necessarily know what you enjoy and then you begin um Mm -hmm. you start to think that what you enjoy is the same things as the person who you're with right, right. um or that tends to be the tendency sure um so i think it's you know if you're single right now then just take the time to be able to figure out what you enjoy and go um get to know other people and just yeah. hang out and like you know grow your faith with god too see what mm-hmm. you believe about him and things like that because that'll help for when somebody does come along, you can know whether you guys align or not. Mm-hmm. So knowing what your values are is really important too. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to like Lyndon and I, when we met, it's mm-hmm. funny because we met at summer camp working as camp staff oh. and we were just <laughs> friends for the summer. Yeah. <laughs> and we like didn't really hang out a ton until Post summer, we started texting and found out that we had a lot of things in common. And it's interesting because both of our previous relationships had kind of scarred us in a sense. So we were coming at it, both coming at this new friendship, even very cautiously. Sure, and yeah. um, it was a good opportunity for both of us to have to build up each other's trust, which I think was just really helpful for us because it wasn't anything that we like rushed into or anything. Right. We took it slow. Friends first. We made sure that we actually 
um, felt good about pursuing a relationship before we made anything official. And I Mm -hmm. think that helped a lot. But with him, like we had a lot of the same values in common. And I like to tell this story where uh, before I ever met him, Mm -hmm. I had just gotten out of a super toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. And like there are a couple other things going on that were just kind of like throwing me off and I wasn't very happy. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting in the car one day and thinking about all these things. And like the thing that was top of mind was relationships Mm -hmm. because I was single and I just, I I was Mm -hmm. torn between like (laughs) wanting to just like give up men Mm -hmm. and marriage and like the idea of ever having a family completely and just like, like, that's it. I'll be like alone forever. It's fine. It's better (laughs) off that way anyway, you know, between that mentality and then also between like, oh no, but I want somebody, I want a partner. (laughs) Like, Uh it's like, you go back and forth as you do. And uh, so (laughs) I finally was just like, okay, that's it. I'm just going to make a list. And so I took a napkin out of the center console and I found a pen in my purse and I just started writing down all of these things that I wanted to find in my future partner. And um, mm-hmm. I I think it was like 21 or 22 things like, mm-hmm. and like very specific too. Mm-hmm. And I folded it up, put it in my purse and then, forgot about it after a while and then (laughs) I think it was like a year later or something like Mm -hmm. that after London and I had started dating I went home for a weekend and I ended up coming across this napkin and I'm breathing through it and when I get to the end I'm like wait a second he has (laughs) every single one of those qualities what that's crazy wow wow. so (laughs) that was really cool to and it's still really cool to look back on and just kind of see how things like that can happen and just Mm -hmm. I think it was part of like just like having that in the back of my mind like that was one of those things where it was really healthy for me to see what my values were and what was important to Mm -hmm. me and a guy and in a partner and I think that stuck with me even though I didn't remember specifically the list until later like I Mm -hmm. think those were still ingrained in me to inherently look for. And so Mm -hmm. doing something like that can also be really good just to like see where you're at and what's important to you Mm -hmm. because then you will hopefully Mm -hmm. uh, end up finding somebody who will Mm -hmm. meet all of those qualities. And on top of that, another piece of advice that I heard actually sitting in chapel on Andrew's campus, I think it was like, my junior or senior year it was when oh no 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 it was before (laughs) that um sophomore year I think okay um this was when I was still in that toxic relationship and and the speaker was up speaking about relationships and I was like I can't get out of this come on (laughs) right right (laughs) um and I'm probably I was probably trying to avoid this sermon like for the most Mm. part and work on homework or something but the speaker said this one line that totally caught my attention and I've never been able to forget it. And Mm. it was opposites attract, but that's opposite personalities, not opposite characters. And at Mm. the time I was like, Oh man, I'm dating someone with like an opposite character and I know it. And and eventually like we broke up and like things didn't work out because of that. And some other like very major reasons, but sure. Um, that was one thing that I knew to look for more than anything was that like, I want to make sure we have the same values and like same character. Mm. And, um, and yeah, so that's wow. my advice in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> a <lot of> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Like so many things came to my mind when you were saying all of that. It was all super, super helpful. Um, what was that quote again? Can you say that again? opposites attract but not opposite personalities look for opposite or i mean or sorry no no no, just kidding opposites attract but not um opposite characters like opposite personalities attract not right. opposite characters. wow wow yeah, yeah yeah i've actually never heard that before that's crazy yeah. that's so crazy. i think he probably just came up with it like it was probably something he just thought of as he was talking wow and i think I was like that one person. I probably wasn't the only person, but it was like when, you know, you know this, when you go and preach different places, you always hope that you'll reach at least one person in the audience. And it was 
I was that one person. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. I totally get that. And I've been there too, where like, I'm like, are they preaching like at me? You know what I mean? Like, right. like what? Like, did they know? Like, <laughs> wow. That's a really, really good story about how, you know, you went from being in this toxic relationship, you know, getting out of that, you know, recognizing it and then mm-hmm. kind of going through that. You said it was like a year, right? Yeah, about. Yeah, like a year where you were just kind of like, you know, figuring out what you wanted, you know, you know, how, you know, making sure you were okay, you know, whatever was going on, right? And then Mm -hmm. meeting, you know, the man that you ended up marrying, like, that's amazing. And I think that do what? I said, yeah, it's kind of crazy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And I really feel strongly as we're talking about this, that there's probably someone listening, right? Who is like, oh, shoot, like, I know I'm in a bad relationship, you know, and you and I both like, clearly, like, we've both we've been there, you know, on that end where we're like, you know, we know we're in a toxic relationship. um, But you know, Mm -hmm. sometimes we we don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear what the preacher or speaker is saying, you know, and we feel like God is trying to you know, get that message to us. And we're just like trying to push it away. But I think you and I can both like attest to the fact that like, you know, you should get out of that toxic relationship. You know, God has Mm -hmm. someone, you know, who will, you know, treat you so much better. Right. And uh, Mm -hmm. I just think, you know, whoever's listening and need to hear that, like, please, like, don't like waste any more time, you know, just like get out of that bad relationship and know that, God has, you know, someone who will treat you better. So thank you for sharing. Like, that's awesome. Seriously. You're awesome. That is super (laughs) awesome. Yeah. And the list, like on a napkin, like, that's so cute. I love that. Like, that seems like straight out of a movie. Like, you said you still have it? Yeah. (laughs) Wow. Aw, that's amazing. You'll never get rid of it. Because I think it's just a really cool reminder. Yeah, definitely. That is so cool. That is so cool. Yeah. Wow. All right, everyone, go find a napkin, you know. (laughs) Pin in a napkin. (laughs) All right. No, that's super cool. All right. Well, moving on to um, to our next question here. Um, So walking with God has its ups and downs. So at what point in life did you determine that you were committed to walk in faith? I was thinking about this and I think it's really just been an everyday choice. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's, I can think of a couple specific instances in my life where I really struggled with my faith in God because of different things that were happening or just figuring out who I was and where I stood and things like that. Mm -hmm. But ultimately what it's come down to is just every day saying like, I choose you God and like, I'm really grateful for you. Um, Cause I mean, in those couple times where I struggle, I mean, like when I say struggle, I mean, I was like screaming at God, like mm-hmm. bawling my eyes out. Like there was like one time when I was just like, okay, God, I'm, I'm officially done with you. I'm just not going to believe in you for a day or like, wow, not yeah, like, yeah. not believe that he existed because right. I still believe he existed. It was okay. just like, I'm not going to believe in you. Yeah, um, yeah. but that didn't even last a full day because wow. I was like, I was like, just kidding. I can't do this. I need you. <laughs> You're like, I can't do this, God. And you're like, just kidding. Like, never mind. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think it can be healthy to go through stuff like that, which sure, yeah. I think for some people to hear can, if you know, that might sound super weird and crazy to say, mm. but God can take it. And that's what I I like to tell people. Like if you are upset about something, if there's something that's just really bothering you, if you're questioning things, God can take it more than anyone. Yeah. And um he'll like gently push back with some his love and answers. Mm -hmm. And it's a it can be a good process for like really figuring out what it is that you stand for and what you believe. Mm -hmm. Um I don't think it's bad to have moments like that um and I think at least like for me after having those different moments like it just reinforced in me like how you know he was still there and he was still moving and I was able to Mm. still see different situations that his hand was in and that was just really comforting to me right um but as far as just walking by faith like every day I just you know I I try to 
listen to a lot of worship music. That's one of um, the ways that I feel closest to God. And I think it's important to note that, um, you know, the way that I might feel close to God might be different than how you feel close to God. And there's like so many different Mm -hmm. avenues that you can go with it. So for me, it's Mm -hmm. like journaling and worship music and maybe listening to some um, like spiritual podcasts and stuff Mm -hmm. like that, or having conversations with others about God and the Bible and like hearing their thoughts on it. And like, just like talking about what we believe and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, like those are really invigorating for me whereas other people it might be like you know going to church or um it could just be um like seeing how god is moving in their lives so like um you know if god provided in a way for you like that can be a great way to Mm -hmm. like you know start seeing him and feeling more connected to him and things like that but Mm -hmm. nurturing like knowing what it is that helps mm. you feel close to God and then nurturing that I think is so important uh, like if you're going to walk by faith because yeah. um like that's how you'll start to feel more connected and it's how you'll start to be able to just feel more rooted in him and then be a person to be able to encourage and uplift other people too mm. and like if other people have questions, they'll begin to see that you're really confident in your relationship with God and that it seems like you um, have like a good experience Mm -hmm. or something along those lines. And they'll see you as somebody who they can talk to if they ever want to. Yeah. Or somebody to, if that makes sense. Yeah. Question. (laughs) Oh, definitely. Yeah. That was a great answer. Absolutely. I think, um, a lot of what I was hearing is like, and I know for me personally, like situations, you know, where you see God at work, I think that's a big part of like continuing to walk in faith and, and, you know, want to be in that relationship with God because, Mm -hmm. you know, you can't see him, you know, it's like, you can't like, he's not right there in front of you. Right. So really like to walk by faith, not by sight, it, it takes a lot of guts you know, and you really got to know like why and, and, you know, it's, you're figuring it out, you know, like you said, every day, like you're just figuring it out. And um, yeah, no, that's awesome. That's super, super cool. I love how you pointed out, you know, you get to that point where you're like, Hey, like, how can I be an encouragement to someone else? You know? Yeah. And I think that can be so helpful Um, for me, especially, I know, um, if I start to like feel down and I'm like, Oh God, like, I feel like I, you know, maybe I feel like I messed up or I'm not doing, you know, the best or whatever it is. I know mm-hmm. when I focus on someone else, I'm like, Hey, like, how can I be there for you? How can I encourage you that God kind of has this way of using those opportunities and situations to even like encourage me, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, that's awesome. All right. So I think we kind of already touched on my next question, which is like, you know, when you get discouraged or down, you know, how do you pick yourself back up? Um, Mm -hmm. You know, that's my next question. But do you have anything else you would want to share for that? Yeah, definitely. Um, So what I do, I'm I'm a big journaler. That's how Mm -hmm. I like clear my head. I'll do brain dumps. I'll just like write things out when I'm feeling inspired or Like if I'm discouraged, I'll try to write it out so I can clear my mind and see what is actually bothering me so I can kind of break it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I'll also talk it out with Lyndon and, you know, or like one of my close friends if he's not available, like if Mm -hmm. he's in school or something. And it's something that like I have to like, you know, have talked out like right now, then Mm -hmm. um, then I'll do that because it helps to get another perspective. And, you know, or if you just need to vent about something too, you know, just get Mm -hmm. things off your chest, then that can be really healthy to do. Um, sometimes I'll go to coffee shops if I feel like I just need to be surrounded by people because like some t- I'll work from home. So mm. if I like get into a moment where I start feeling really discouraged about something, like I can't really like focus or concentrate on things that I need to do, I'll mm-hmm. write it out and then I'll end up going to a coffee shop to try and like get some things done and be like surrounded by people and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, prayer definitely helps Mm. sometimes I'll just blast worship music until it feels like you know I'm at a like 
like have less weight on my shoulders kind mm-hmm. of thing. I was just like sing it out, like belt it out mm-hmm. and like, you know, as long as I need to kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah. Um, and like venting out loud to God if I need to, mm-hmm. like I'll, I'll do that for sure. Mm-hmm. And um, sometimes reading really helps too. Oh, so I like yeah. reading self-improvement books. I just think they're mm-hmm. like really eye-opening yeah. and just really healthy to be able to like um, think of, you know, read these different perspectives and mm-hmm. see the different ways that you can grow personally. And so doing that will also kind of help me to, to kind of take a step back and um, just like kind of like view things from, from a different angle. Yeah. No, that is awesome. Seriously. I love everything you mentioned, you know, the prayer, you know, finding someone that you can trust who you can, you know, talk to in person, you know, going to a coffee shop. I love that. Um, you know me, I love coffee shops. Like they're just the best. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're the best. Yeah. And reading do you, off the top of your head, is there like a book like you would recommend? If not, it's okay. But there's yeah, you should read Preach to Yourself by mm-hmm. Haley Morgan. It's really, really good. It's okay. it's like a mix of self-improvement, but it's faith-based too. So you get best of both worlds. Cool. And you said it was called Preach to Yourself by who was it? Haley Morgan. Haley Morgan. All right, cool. Yeah. There you go, people. If you want to read a good book, <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> Joelle recommended it. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, well, that really was- good. Cool, cool. That was a great answer. I love it. Love it. Well, Joelle, this has been a great time. I hope you've had fun. (laughs) I have. (laughs) I've had a blast. I've been looking forward to this interview for like days. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. (laughs) So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to uh, spend with us here, you know, so because we know you're very busy. Well, thanks for having me on your podcast, Absolutely. sis. I'm so excited to listen to all the episodes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. And uh, where can we find you on uh, social media? Are you on Instagram, Facebook? Definitely on Instagram. I have two accounts. So if you want to follow like the photography work that I do, then look up Joelle Elizabeth photo. If you're a business owner or a photographer and you just want more education or encouragement on those topics, then you can find me at heart to heart official. Um, And it's the same on Facebook, Joelle Elizabeth photography or heart to heart. Awesome. Awesome. And that's your podcast, right? Heart to heart. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, guys, definitely go check out her podcast. Like it is so good. I was just listening to it this morning. Like I was just like, this is so good. So good. Even if you're (laughs) not a photographer and you know, not all of your episodes are about photography. Right. But, um, but there are like, your content is like 10 out of 10. It's great. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) So guys, go check that out for sure. Um, all right, Joel, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. My pleasure. (laughs) All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. We hope that you, you know, were encouraged, got some good things out of this. And uh, be sure to tune in next time. I'm going to be having Justin Koo on the show. He's a YouTuber, uh, very successful, great guy. Um, You'll definitely want to tune in for that episode. So thank you guys for listening. And we will talk with each other very, very soon.